Good morning. It's great to see everyone. We're thankful you're here and you're with us and in God's presence. There yeah. is fullness of joy. Right here in our little get together and we might gather like this way, but there's a big, big God that we serve. Amen. So God's got big things for us today. We're going to talk about love and uh, how love overcomes fear. And we're starting a new series, The Power of Love, uh, because love is everything. And, you know, you can never, ever get enough love. We all need to grow in love. Amen. Right? I mean, and when, whenever you think you arrive, that's usually a sign you need more love because that's start fun. over. That's Go fun. back to the basics. <laughs> and uh, it's a big, big thing because love is the foundation for everything. So the more we understand God's love, the more it helps us in every area of our life, uh, how to deal with every area. So we're going to talk about that today. Uh, the series of Power of Love, and we're going to start today, what I am calling today is how love conquers fear. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that today. It's going to be good. So Sarah's going to lead us in prayer, and then we'll get right into this whole series on the power of love. The power of love. All right. So Lord, we worship you. We come before you with thanksgiving and praise. We magnify you, Jesus. We magnify you, Father. We magnify you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that in your presence there is fullness of joy, and we come before you with thanksgiving and praise. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you are faithful and true and the author and the finisher of our faith, you're our joy and our strength, our shield, our strong tower. You're our father and our friend, our provider, our sanctifier, our healer, our deliverer, our merciful and compassionate high priest, our intercessor, our advocate, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the creator of all the earth, the very word itself. We look to you, Lord. We look to you today for you're where our help comes from. There is no one like you, Lord. There is no one like you, Lord. And so we thank you. We thank you for your kindness and your compassion. We thank you for your blood. We thank you that we, for a spirit of unity and the hunger and faith, that we can have faith, that we can have hope, that we can rest in you and put our trust fully in you. We thank you, Lord, for how you've redeemed us out of darkness into your marvelous light. You've redeemed us out of that kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of sickness, out of poverty, out of death, out of despair, out of depression, out of anxiety. And you've put us into the marvelous light of joy and peace and love and righteousness because of your blood, because of your victory on the cross. Because you saw us sitting here today. And we are here for one purpose alone. There's one thing I desire and there's one thing I shall seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And behold the beautiness of his dwelling. Thank you for your holiness, O oh Lord. Thank you for your purity. That in your presence, there's purity and there's life and there's light and there's your love. And I thank you, God, that nothing can separate us from your love. Neither height nor depth, 
nor length, nor width, nor power, nor principality, nor any other created thing can ever separate us from your love, that we are your beloved children, that we are the redeemed of the Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness to us, Lord, that you just bestowed on us love as such a free gift of grace, not because of our works, but because of your finished work. Thank you for the love that sustains us, the love that keeps us, the love that made a way that we can enter into your presence and be one with you and one with one another. The love that drives out all fear, the love that's the force that conquers the unconquerable, the love that says that nothing is impossible for those who believe. It's your love, Lord. Open our eyes to see and our ears to hear your voice, which is consciously beckoning to us. Come up higher. I want to show you more of my love. I want to engulf you in my love. I want to surround you in my love. I want to envelop you in my love. I want to hide you in the cleft of the rock of my love. Your love, Lord. Your love is the anointing that destroys the yokes. It's your love that has set us free. It's your love. It's not a worldly love, yet it has such great substance, such great weight that it can take a poor beggar and an ash sheep and make him a prince. And because of your love, we are one with you, seated in heavenly places, holding Jesus Christ, the express image of the Father. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, Father. Thank you for your love for us. And she sent your only begotten son. Your only son, Lord, you laid down. And you raised him back up again as the first <laughs> of many. So as the captain of our salvation, we thank you that you lead us over rocky waters and into the smooth lake of love. Take us, Lord, into places we've never gone in the spirit. Holy Spirit, we yield to you. We ask for a spirit of wisdom and revelation to be poured out, for the eyes of our understanding to be opened, for our ears to hear, and let not only the Holy Spirit say come, but let the bride say come. That's us. We come up higher. Let heaven come today. Let your manifest presence be in each and every household, each and every car, each and every wherever people are. It's your love that goes to the ends of the earth, that hears every cry, that hears every prayer, that knows every tear. And save them in a bottle. And I said, you know, I've heard, and I love you. And I love you just as you are. So I thank you for your blood, Lord. I thank you for your love, Lord. And I thank you for your glory that's here today, Lord. We give you the blessing, all blessing, and all honor, and all glory, and all power. It all belongs to you. 
Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Ooh. Amen. Well, as we get ready to share today on love. Thank you. Let's just really say thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for loving thank us. Thank you, Lord, for coming for us. Thank you for coming for us. And giving your life. And giving your life. I mean, no greater love is that than somebody that says, I'll lay down my life. So we have a lot to be thankful for every day. Thank no, like we have a lot to say thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord. So uh, as we tackle this uh, vast subject of God's love, we're uh, we're going to do our best to talk about the principles of God's love, the process of love, uh, the goal of love, and then there's the test of love. All of those things are what we will walk through. The Bible says we're called to walk in his love in Ephesians. It says to walk in love. So this whole walk we are in is a love walk. Um, now, we also know we're to walk by faith and not by sight and faith and all those things. That, but faith and hope are all predicated on love. Thank you. Because the Bible says now abides faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. So when we understand love, then faith works because love will cause us to love God, trust God trust his word, and that builds your faith. Yeah. When you have hope for something, it means that you, you serve a God that you trust. Yeah. And that when he gives you a destiny or a promise, you go, wow, I love him and thank him that he's given me something to look forward to. So love even creates hope. Yes. Love is the basis for hope. Because God loves me, he has a plan for me. Because God loves me, he wants me to have a future. Yes. Because God loves me, he wants me to have a purpose. Amen. All is predicated on God's love. And when God chose us, he didn't do it because he had to. He chose us because he loved us. Yeah. He set our affection, his affection on us. It's amazing because love, when we define love, we have to start with God because God is love. Amen. His name is love. God is love. So if God is love, that means he's consumed every part of his being and his nature is filled with what we call love so love is not just a word love is a substance it is life yeah. it is the very essence of god that makes up god god is love and uh, when we talk about god being love you know we have to define a little bit of love so last week we defined it, but we're starting this series today to really go deeper into love. So the Greek word agape is the same word for love. So God's love is not based on what anybody else does. It's based on who he is. Yeah. So God is love. And God's love gives continually part of the nature of love is to give so because uh the nature of god is love built within his nature are certain what i call attributes or certain things about love that are already built in love in the nature of god one of those is giving for god so loved that he gave so giving is a byproduct of love. Yeah. Another thing about love is love is never selfish. Love is selfless. Yeah. So God never gave 
out of his selfishness because he doesn't have any. He gave out of true love that only wants to give what it has to bless and help someone else. Yeah. Awesome. Love, like you might love cherries or love this or love that. That's not the kind of love we're talking about. Right. God's love is not predicated on like or dislike. It's predicated on he is love. And therefore, because he is love, out of that love, everything emanates or comes forth. Um, so I like to put it this way, too. God is filled with qualities of his love that are every aspect of what he is. Love is patient. God is patient. God is kind. God, all the things in 1 Corinthians 13 we'll look at today, but all those things God already is. And he made us to be just like that. Amen. And when you really get down to it, when you really understand the love of God, it starts to consume away all your fear, all yeah. your doubt, all your unbelief, because you know that God loves you and he accepts you, yeah. not based on what you do or don't do. He accepts you just because he made you who you are and he loves you without you having to perform. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. But you're ex freedom. accepted. Accepted. Doesn't matter if anybody else accepts you. You're accepted by God. Amen. Amen. So God loves you. And love is not just a, a, a feeling. Love is an action. Mm -hmm. For God so loved us that he sent his son because he loved us. But we'll get more into this as we go. Let's read some scriptures. Uh, let's start with John 13, 34. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Yeah. So... Jesus lays it right out from the beginning. The whole walk after you accept Christ in your life is about walking in love, loving him, loving one another. He says that's where the foundation of everything starts. And today we're going to talk about how to do that. But I just want to put out some scriptures right in the beginning, and then we'll get into all that. Let's look at our next verse in Mark 12. So I'm just going to read this. Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There's no other commandment greater than these. Wow. Powerful, isn't it? So the Lord's saying, here's where we start. He said, the first thing is, my first command is that you love the Lord with all your heart. What do you think that means, Sarah? All your soul. What do you think that means, Sarah? Well, the heart is the seat of your affections. Right. So that means that the Lord has the primary place in every area, in every aspect, yeah. in your thoughts, in your attitudes, in your motives. Um in your actions and your words and just it, it consumes mm -hmm. the very fiber and essence of who you are yeah but you have to make the choice to allow him to have that first place yeah and notice it says you love him also with your soul your mind your will and your emotions so your mind your will which means your thoughts right your emotions your feelings your will all of that is to be consumed with God's love. Yes. And, and, and you know, that's a big, big thing. Because God, I like to use the word, he wants to saturate your thoughts with his thoughts. Yeah. Saturate 
your feelings with his feelings. Yeah. Saturate your ways with his ways. Yes. Uh, but what were you going to say? Um, and it's, and when you do love the Lord with all your soul and with all your mind, what happens is he is Lord. So your, your will comes into alignment with his will. Yeah. Your emotions come under the lordship of Jesus. Yeah. You decide and make that choice to choose life and submit to his lordship. And it's a joyful thing. Yeah. It's not a dutiful religious requirement. Right. It's a joyful response to his love for you. Yeah. And so when I know that God loves me unconditionally. Yeah. That it's not based on what I do or don't do. His love will never change for me. Yeah. It'll always be there. Yeah. It starts to create a confidence in me. Yeah. And what we're going to get into here in a minute about conquering fear, which is what our subject is today. If you remember, after Adam was in the garden with Eve, we know that he disobeyed God. Right. Ate of the forbidden fruit. And then he hides, right. puts fig leaves on himself to cover his shame, and he's afraid of God. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, man enters into this realm we call fear, where he becomes yeah. afraid. Before that, perfect love saturated Adam and Eve yeah. to the point where they knew God loved them and they loved each other with that love. Mm -hmm. There was no fear, no sickness, no lack, no anything. Right. But whenever they disobeyed, as soon as they ate of that fruit, not only did death come in and the life of God go out, but more importantly, they didn't sense his love anymore. Yeah. Now he never stopped loving them though, Sarah. Right. Isn't that amazing? Yes. His love was still there for them. And that's why he ran after them. And even right. And even though their condition was sinful, yes. He never gave up. Never gave up. So put it down. Love never gives up on me. Love never gives up on me. God never gives up on me. You see, that's part of the essence of love. Love never gives up. It's not based on condition. That should give all of us hope today. Yes. That if God kept loving Adam and Eve, even after they messed up and sinned, and did the biggest sin of all, of disobeying and eating the, of the, of the fruit, God still loved them and came after them. Yeah. And I even believe in God's love and mercy for them yeah. that he protected them from having the revelation of what the true consequence would be for all the generations to come yeah. i really believe that he protected them in, in in his love by not letting them see all that would happen afterwards that that was that yeah. that is incredible love yeah because if they had really had a revelation of the fullness of the consequence i don't know that they would have been able to bear up under it well and the thing about it is it says that when Adam was afraid, yeah. he said, Lord, I, I was afraid. Uh, I was going to look this up. I think I wrote it in my notes. But when Adam responded to the Lord, it, it's an amazing response. Because God says, Adam, where are you? Yeah. Now, God knew where he was. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but you know why God did that? Why do you think God said to him and asked him a question? where are you because he's trying to call him out of the fear yeah that's right he's trying to let him know just because you messed up i'm still here don't be afraid don't shrink back from me yeah uh but here's what it is i wrote it down uh, is that uh it says that adam finally admitted to the lord after the lord called to him he said I heard your voice in the garden, mm -hmm. and I was afraid. That's yes. the reason I didn't answer you. Yeah. Not that I didn't want to. I was afraid to answer you because I didn't know what you thought of me. Yeah. 
and we all go through that, don't we? We, if we mess up or we sin, there's a, a thought that comes up in your soul. I wonder what God thinks about me now, and that's what creates torment. That and, will create torment and fear. But I just I want to ease your soul today. God will never think any less of you, even when we make a mistake or sin. Not that he agrees with it or he wants us to do that, but it doesn't cause him to think less of us. He still loves us the same way. Yeah. That's an amazing thing. So, uh, so part of what fear does, and write this in your notes, it generates constant worry yeah. about wondering what does God think of me now? Or what does what do people think of me? Uh, because we have this big concern how people think about us or how God thinks about us, and that causes worry. But when you know God loves you and accepts you unconditionally, it will get rid of that fear. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's right what we did, but we won't be afraid of what God's going to do. Now, there's a reverential fear of the Lord yes. we're going to get into. Yes. And that'll displace the whole thing. Yeah. The fear of the Lord's the beginning of wisdom. Amen. So the fear I have of the Lord is not what he's going to do to me. The fear of the Lord is I don't want to hurt the Lord. And I want to get right back up and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Yeah. Because I know you love me. And I know I let you down. But I know you're not giving up on me. So I'm going to get right back up here and repent. And you're going to bring me right back in to where I need to be. Yeah. Because you love me. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. Yeah. That's how love overcomes fear. It is. Yeah. So when you have confidence with God, write this down, that God will love you unconditionally, it will cause fear to leave. Fear will leave when you know you can confidently know that God loves me unconditionally. And may I just add something to that? Yeah. One of the ways that I've learned that God loves me unconditionally, and I'm not promoting this as a way to do it, but just in our walk with the Lord, we are not going to get everything right the first time. <laughs> and we are not, we're going to mess up. That's why the blood is there. And I, I'm not advocating going out and sinning. I'm not advocating messing up. But one of the ways that I've learned the unconditional love of God is through failure. Yeah. And I'm thankful for that because I've learned that he's come running after me in his loving kindness when I've messed up yeah. so badly. And so out of that, he has always turned it around for good and given me a greater revelation of his loving kindness. Now, that doesn't mean go out and sin, right. but it does say where sin abounds, grace abounds that much more and build in grace is the love yeah. of God. That's right. And one of the big issues with love and grace that people misunderstand, people think, well, if you tell people that God's grace is for them and he loves them, that they're just going to go out here and do anything they want. Mm -hmm. But actually, the more you understand love, and the more you understand how much God loves you and is for you, the less you're going to want to sin. Because you don't, you don't want to hurt God. Yeah. Because he's been so good to you and you love him and you're so thankful. And for what all he's provided by grace, it, it, it causes you, it says in the book of Titus, that you will not want to be lawless. Amen. You will not want to sin because you're so thankful continually for what God's done for you. And, uh, the more you grow in love, the less you're going to want to sin to hurt God. Yeah. It's the way it works. And it's actually unnatural Yeah. to a, to a born-again believer. It's unnatural to yeah. sin. Yeah. It really is. I mean, there might be things in your soul that need to be worked out. Yeah. But it really is unnatural to who you truly are yeah. as a person in your spirit. And because the more you love God, the more you hunger for him. Amen. The more you want to learn about his word, his nature. You want to praise him. You want to do the things that he loves. And the more you love God, the more you grow in trust in God. And the more you understand trust, the more confidence you have that there's no other way I can live except in Christ, in his love, yes. learning of his love, developing in his love, 
uh, strengthening in his love because I want to learn to love how he loves. Because yeah. if I can learn to love how he loves, that's going to give me a stronger basis and foundation for everything in my life yeah. that I'm believing for. Yeah. And so let's look at this scripture real quick. I just think this would be good. Let's go to Proverbs 8, 17. I love this. I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently will find me. Wow. So look at that. God's saying, I love everyone equally, but then there's those who will love me and abide in me and run after me. Yeah. Seek me. And he says, I really want you to know, I love those who love me. Yeah. And I pray today that us, will, all of us will seek him more diligently. Amen. The word diligence means to make every effort. So when I wake up in the morning, I want to show God, I love you. By my praise, by my thanks, by letting him know how thankful I am. Yeah. That he brought me through the night for all that he's done for me, for the what he's how he's made me everything about him that he's given to me i love yeah and i'm in love with what he has done mm -hmm. and when i express that love back to him mm -hmm. it causes him to i like to say bring his manifest presence amen in a greater measure upon your thought life and upon you and it shines through you yeah. And causes others to be attracted to you. It's true. It's true. And that perfect love starts to remove fear from you. And you have a confidence in your words, in what you do, and in your actions. Uh, I wrote this down, if you could put this in your notes today. We have been born of God. And because of that, we automatically are born in God's love. Yeah. And because God loved, God's love lives in us, then we can not only grow in that love and learn of that love, but eventually we will live out that love in such a way that it will cause us to shine with this big word, the glory of God. Amen. The glory of God is the goodness of God. It's the God, great person. It's the yeah. great person of Jesus Christ coming in. That's yeah. the glory. Yeah. And the glory is all about the goodness. Yeah. For God is good. And his mercy, and his mercy endures forever. See, there's the love and the goodness. Mercy is love in action. Amen. So if I say to Sarah, I love you, Sarah, I can say that with my words. And that's good, but Sarah likes it more if I got <laughs> to say it when I do something, give her a hug or kiss her on the forehead. That expression is mercy. <laughs> so love says and mercy acts with that's that. That's good. Love. That makes sense? Yes. For God so loved that he sent his son and his son went to the cross. That's an act of mercy. It's love, but mercy is the action of love. That's really good. Yeah. So that's really good. So the whole word of God, the Bible, is a revelation of God's love. Yeah. The whole thing. And the better we understand God's love, which you're going to talk about the next few weeks, the better we understand God's love, write this down, the better we understand God's love, the easier it is to obey God and love others. Yeah. It becomes easier. Um, uh, I remember, uh, where is it in the Bible? Where Jacob, uh, he, he wants to go for Rachel, but then he has to work for seven years. For seven years. For but, Laban. But, but, but the Bible says when he worked in those seven years because of his love, it seemed like a few days. Yeah. That's what it says. Where is that? I wrote it down. Uh, Genesis 29, 20. 
It says that when Jacob loved in that seven year period, because it was so fervent, it seemed like a few days. Yeah. So when you get overwhelmed with the love of God, it just causes everything to seem shorter than it is. It, it does. It's great. So because God is love, we can love. So we can love because God is love and we're in that love. And that perfect love gets that on fear. We'll get into that shortly. So let's look at our next scripture, uh, the love chapter. Let's look a little, a little bit here in 1 Corinthians 13, this loaded section of scripture. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Yes, yeah, so never yeah. fails. Yeah. Verse eight. Yeah. Me... <laughs> so this is all part of the nature definition of love. So you could put in there, God suffers long. God is kind. God's love does not envy. God's love does not parade itself. God's love is not puffed up. So God is none of those things. And I I really have, um, I think one of the ways to overcome fear as well, when it says, thinks no evil, God is never thinking evil of me. Yeah. God is never thinking evil of me. And, and it also then brings me into this revelation when I'm interacting with others. I, out of my, out of the response for God's thoughts towards me and his love for me, who am I to think evil of others? Yeah. Rather than to believe the best. That's right. And so we in turn are given this incredible definition of love here as an opportunity that we can know this is possible it is possible for us to be this way and that takes a willingness on our end and a desire to say i want to love the way god loves me mm -hmm. I want to love others the way God loves me and loves others. So I, I wrote this down a little bit of some things. When we read like love is patient. Yes. What's that mean? It means it's, that I'm not harsh or irritable. <laughs> I don't yell or raise my voice. I'm easy to live with. <laughs> I'm easy to work with. I'm patient. <laughs> now, how many are all that? No, we're growing in all that. <laughs> Amen. How about love is kind? What's that mean? That means I'm thoughtful, right? I'm considerate. I speak with a gentle voice. You're right. Not harsh or abrasive. I smile at people. I build people up. And I don't tear them down. Yeah. I'm kind. That's what it means to be kind. Amen. How about love does not end? It? What does that mean? I wrote this down. It means I'm not jealous of anyone. Yeah. It means I don't have to compete with anybody. Right. It means I'm content and secure with who I am. And I want the best for others. That's what it means not to envy. Envy always wants the best for someone. And you can also envy, love does not envy, also means that you have the freedom to celebrate when others have a victory. That's There's right. nothing in your heart that stops you from celebrating something, even if you, if you haven't maybe seen that promise happen right. in your own life that you want to be the first ones on the front line to celebrate that other person and join and rejoice with them that that is Amen. a very if there's something in you that that is that there's a block where you can't partake and rejoice with someone else and celebrate with someone else then 
we need to go back to our motive and say, is there a part of envy in me? Is right. there a part of jealousy in me? Right. And check right. the motive of the heart. Amen. And, and we're going to dovetail all this in, ultimately, how this conquers fear. Right. Because, see, when you know how to walk in love and you're carrying out love, you don't fear what people think about you. You don't fear of the unknown. You don't fear because you know that you're accepted and you're so focused on love. Worry and fear start to drop off of us. Yeah. We also saw in there that love does not boast. So what does that mean? It means it doesn't seek attention for itself. It don't practice like dropping names of, and all that to prove, hey, I know so-and-so, so you're accepting. No, I don't need to do any of that kind of stuff. You know, I don't have to be the center of conversation. I don't have to tell others what I've accomplished. I don't have to boast in anything. I'm secure in the love of Christ. Because God loves me, I don't need to talk about anything to try to get to somebody else to love me. Right. I'm already loved. Right. I'm not afraid of what people think of me. I know I'm accepted. We also saw there where love is not arrogant. What does that mean? That means we're not prideful or conceited. We don't, uh, in other words, I don't think I'm better than somebody else. I never want to come across like, put that air out like, hey, I'm better than you are. You want to come across in love or no matter who you're talking to, that you can see value in them, that they sense that they're accepted by you, and that you're not looking at them with a personal preference, but you're seeing them through the eyes of love. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So it's almost like, uh, how can I say this? Uh, I know that any good that's in me is a gift from God, and I'll never forget that. Amen. So the goodness that's in me, I attribute to God that is a gift. So therefore, when I share with anybody, I want to come across knowing it's but for the grace of God, I don't have anything to give you. Yeah. I'm not going to boast in anything but God. Now, I can boast on how, what God's made me into. Yeah. That's not pride. That, no, that's true. You can say how he's changed you and thank god <laughs> he changed me yeah but that's a different type of boasting it's it's boasting in the lord right for what he's done here's a big one sarah that i have to grow in love is not rude <laughs> i am a work in progress <laughs> now i said to all of you today that love is a process I mean, all these things we're talking about that we're defining is a process. Right. It can take days or years, but it's up to us. But look, love is not rude. This is what that means. I, by not being rude, I'm sensitive to the feelings of others. It means I treat people with respect and courtesy. It means I don't use a cutting, harsh tone of voice. That's what it means not to be rude. Yeah. Now, I'm growing in all that. How many of you want to grow in all these that we're talking about? We're, we're, we don't want to be harsh with our voice. We want to be sensitive to the feelings of others. We want to treat people with respect. You do. You do. Yeah. So I'm not saying I don't do that. I'm just saying I'm growing in yeah. Right. See, love doesn't insist on having its own way. Uh, I wrote this down. When I walk in love, I don't insist on me uh, having my own preference over what I want for somebody else. Uh, it's easy for me to defer and to submit to somebody when I love them. Right. Yeah, it's, it's not a big deal. I look for opportunities to serve people, right. not control people. Right. That's what love is all about. Uh, 
this is a here's a big one. Love is not irritable. Now, what does that mean? It means this. We're almost done defining all these love things, but we have to. It means this love is not irritable. It means I'm not touchy, defensive, or overly sensitive. And here's a big one or easily offended. Wow. And I would say that that's one thing, if, if we look around today, that's one of the offense is one of the biggest areas yeah. that the enemy is trying to attack. Yeah. So if we can walk in love, we can overcome those offenses and we don't have to be bound by them. No. Yeah, you, when, when people get around you, they should feel comfortable. Yeah. They should feel secure. When you're walking in love, people should feel like they're accepted when they're near you. Yeah. Because they sense that in the way you are and the way you think and the way you talk and the way you act. Right. That's what we're talking about. Right. If we want to be like God, that's the way we should feel about God. Right. We're accepted, loved, and all that. And that gets rid of fear, gets rid of worry, yeah. gets rid of pretense, everything. Yeah. And that's what it means. And lastly, love is not resentful. What does that mean? That means I forgive quickly. I don't hang on to grudges or nurse grievances. That's good. I don't grow bitter at those who have hurt me. I'm overwhelmed by God's forgiveness, so I gladly extend grace to others because I know how graceful and forgiving he's been to me. Amen. Amen. Love does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with truth. Amen. So none of us are secretly glad if somebody falls or whatever we want to be there for them love great great pray for them the great. way god prays for us jesus prays for us right <clears throat> so that's that's love right there all those things we define are part of our goal yeah. We're a work in progress, but we are going to get there. Yes. Because God says we can walk in this kind of love. We can walk in love that's not irritable, not envious. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. But the only way to walk in this kind of love is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. There we're is gonna, no other way to do We're going to get to that. You cannot walk in this love in and of yourself. Thank God you <laughs> were not put here to try to do this on your own. You've been given the Holy Spirit. That's what Amen. Jesus said. Amen. You need the Holy Spirit to shed abroad his love in your heart. Amen. Uh, but, yeah, so, again, all those definitions of love, you might want to go back after we're done today and revisit this uh, Zoom cast and because there was a lot there. I didn't want to go too fast, but I, I felt like we got it out. Yeah. And can I share something? Yeah. I just want to share. I feel like I, I've been feeling prompted to share this for like the past 20 minutes. And um, so sometimes we hear about love and we say, I know God's love. And we start to close our ears to it because we think that we've we know it. We think we've heard the definitions and we think I've heard this before. And, you know, I know I'm supposed to love people. Um, and I normally don't share this type of thing, but the Lord is really like prompting me to do this. Um, one day, I don't know, in the past maybe six months or so, I was in my office praying and the loving kindness of the Lord came in the room so powerfully you remember me telling you about this mm -hmm. came in so powerfully i fell under the power of the loving kindness i knew very specifically the lord said to me i am going to give you a revelation of my loving kindness and i fell under the power of the loving kindness of the lord to the point that my physical body was burning 
and it was overwhelming to every cell, every thought, every, every fiber of my being and foolishly, <laughs> please don't do this. If this happens to you, um, I was like, I don't know if I can handle this anymore, Lord, it's too much. Mm. And that's really not the right way to respond. But my point in all of this is it, the love and the loving kindness of God is so overpowering that for us to even talk about this here is just the very, very um, like icing on the cake. We haven't even gotten in to the to the actual sub like substance. I'm not discrediting what you're saying or undermining it. We have to talk about it in this sense. But what I'm trying to say is when the, that loving kindness and the very person of the Lord walks in the room and you encounter that loving kindness, it saturates and is so much that it almost feels too much for you to bear up under. And I was under that weight for a significant amount of time, but I want to encourage you all to continue to go back and revisit the love of God and ask the Lord, show me your love, show me your love, show me your loving kindness for me, because it is more than our thoughts, than our, even our thoughts can even imagine. It's more than our heart can even imagine. The only way that we can really encounter it is when we encounter the very love of God, like the, the very person of Jesus Christ himself by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I just want to encourage you all to, to be open to that, to be open to that and hungry for that, because if he can do it with me, he can do it with you. And so it's more it's so much, it's so much more. And I'm not by any means, I, I, I am honoring what you're saying, but I just want to bring the weight of the glory upon this because I was, I felt, I sensed to, and, um, let him love you, let him love you. And please don't, if he does this type of thing with you say, it's too much for me, <laughs> please don't let him have his way. So I just, I want to encourage you that it's so vast. It's beyond our comprehension. <clears throat> yeah. And I <clears throat> I think the thing is really to understand God's love, it is incomprehensible almost because but because it's something that's uh so amazing. And we're gonna do our best to define it. But yeah, the key, I mean that in love. You know no, I know. But the key is to experience it yes. for yourself as you know him. Yes. And get to know him, spend time with him in his word and loving him. And his his presence will continue to saturate you yeah. with his love. Let's go to uh, Romans 12 now. Romans 12, 10 to 13. It's our next little part. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, brotherly love, in honor, giving preference to one another. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Yes. Yeah, so there is every aspect of love we just defined in 1 Corinthians 13. And here Paul reiterates that in saying, now, when you walk in this kind of love, you're going to have a kindness and an affection to one another. And you're going to prefer one another with honor yeah you're going to honor if we could get this in the church today to honor and prefer one another and love one another the way god is talking that will spring forward that is the foundational springing for revival amen and it's interesting because uh, i had worked on this teaching uh even before the asbury revival i was working on the love series that's what God was showing me that I'm going to bring a love revolution back to my church. Amen. That it's good. It's time for, see, everybody thinks they 
walk in love and understand love, but really a lot of, if we were walking in love the way we're supposed to as a church, we would have had revival long ago. Right. Because the love of God can't be contained. Right. And whenever we are walking in love, love is motivational. Love is ignite. Love ignites things. Amen. Uh, I just would like to say to all of you that love is an igniter. It's a fire. It is. You know, I love that one song. I think it's, I think I forget, love is burning in my soul and I can't control. What's that? What's that one? Yeah. You know what that song is? I do know what song it is. I just can't remember. Jesus. Jesus is Jesus culture? I think they did it. It was like 2012 or There's something. There's a fire down in, in my, my soul. soul. That I can't contain, and I can't, can't control. control. Uh, and, and that's what love does. It starts to bring that. And it's interesting because I went back and I reviewed uh, the message at the Asbury Revival that started to move. And you know what? It was out of Romans chapter 12. Amen. That guy that night was speaking on Romans 12 about love Amen. and he said i i'm praying tonight that this love that god's talking about it'll it'll, it'll get on you and cause you like to have an itch to love Amen. where he said you embrace and celebrate your teammates you celebrate yeah. others you you walk in this love i pray that we get saturated with this love well that night after he was done uh there was only 15 students there or something but they all stayed and started to worship. They said, Lord, we want that love. And, and they never stopped. And more and more students were drawn to come in. Yes. So God started drawing everybody into the presence of his love. And out of that, the rest is history. And it's now springboarded across the whole nation. Yes. This whole tangible presence of the love of Jesus. Amen. Which is igniting people to have a passion for him again. The hunger for his word. And the hunger to express his love to others. Yeah. Powerful. That's when you know revival comes. When people walk in that love that they can't keep it to themselves. Yeah. And yeah. It, you know what? Revival can start with one. Yeah. Well, it's already started. I mean, but I'm just saying that one person on fire for God. That's it. That's it. So we're praying for a baptism of love. Yes. And with that love comes fire. Amen. With that fire, you become hungry. And with that fire, you become effective to be a witness. Yes. Because people will be drawn to you because God will send them. He will. And you'll open your mouth and he'll fill it. Yeah. Look out. <laughs> Let's look at Acts 5.42 for just a minute. I want to show you what happened in the early church. As a result, it says, what does it say, Sarah? Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. I love that. So when they got baptized in the Holy Spirit and with fire, the motivation behind all of it was God's love. Yes. So when the love comes upon us, the hunger and the fire follow. Yeah. So we're going to pray this whole month for a baptism of the love of God. Amen. Come on, people, right, sir? Yes. Woo! Let's go to Philippians 1 9. Look at this prayer. There you go, sir. And I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense. Till the day of Christ. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray today that your love's going to grow more and more. So what do we say? Love is patient. 
Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. Love is not arrogant. Love is not rude. All that stuff. Love does not insist on its own way. Love is not selfish. Love is not irritable. Love is not resentful. Love is, in essence, all those things. And God is making us to be that way like him. Yes. We're being conformed to his love. Yes. Isn't that exciting, Sarah? I'm very excited. <laughs> love is like so important. I wrote this down. Uh, love matters. Yeah. Love matters. Uh, it matters how we love God. It matters how we love people. Love matters uh, more than anything else in our life. We need to be people that walk in love, that act in love, that show love, and that are a witness of his love Yeah, everywhere we go, and always ready to show forth that love. Amen. Amen. Uh, look, unconditional love is radical. It's hard to love people unconditionally. <laughs> you know, I, there's a great statement. I love God. It's just people I can't deal with. <laughs> but God says we can love people the way he does. Yeah. I heard Joyce Meyer once say something that well, I'm paraphrasing, but she said something along the lines of, I did great with my love walk when I was at home all day and I was praying and I was praising the Lord. But when the people started coming home, it was all over. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> So, it, <laughs> so it's really important that we have to love people unconditionally. Yeah. <laughs> and to do that, it's supernatural. Because you can't do it in your natural. It's absolutely supernatural to do that. And we're going to talk about how to do that in the upcoming weeks. But today, we're going to talk more about perfect love and just defining love and casting out fear. Let's go to our next verse to go a little bit deeper into that. First John 4, 18 and 19. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Amen. So what does that mean to you, Sarah? Well, I actually would flip it around first. And even though it's written this way, because he loves us first, right. we can love him back. And out of that, out of his love, it drives out that tormenting fear. Fear always has torment attached to it. And torment is wicked and torment will um, harass your mind and your emotions and your thought life, but the love of God completely comes in and eradicates like every fear to the, even in the deepest places that we may not even know it ex exists. Right. Even in the deepest places, his love will go there. Like it says in Psalm 139, like, where can I go mm -hmm. that your presence isn't with me? Yeah. Even if I go to the depths of shale, you're there. It's right. his love that'll go to the depths of us and pull out that fear, pull out that torment and displace it with his perfect love. That's right. But it's a maturing process. Right. It's a maturing process. So the more I learn about the love of God, <clears throat> the more I'm consumed with God's love, the less fear can stay in me. Right. So it's so here's your equation. The more I love, less fear. <laughs> or that does, or that's the answer <laughs> yeah so that doesn't mean that fear doesn't come around us we can have you know certain sudden fears and all that but we will not let fear settle in us right we will say i rebuke the spirit of fear because god's not given that to me and make no mistake about it fear is a spirit the spirit of fear but for god has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and love and a sound mind. 
So power 11 and sound mind all go together and they all are absolute just forces to destroy fear. Amen. Fear is a force, but love is a stronger force. God's love right. is stronger than any fear. And uh, God's love has authority. Yeah. See, the thing is, fear may have power, but it doesn't have authority unless you give it to it. Love actually has authority and power. Yeah. Exactly. So whenever, whenever I say to fear, fear you have no place in me, I take authority over you. You are speaking out of the power of the resurrection victory that Jesus won. Jesus said, in my name. In my name. You will ask what you want now. We'll do it in my name, in my authority. You have the authority because I destroyed Satan. I destroyed fear at the cross. Right. Therefore, you will destroy fear because my love is greater than any fear. Right. And my power is greater than any fear. And I give you power and authority to trample on serpents, on serpents and scorpions. And scorpions, anything that opposes my love for you. See, love means that God loved me. God wants the best for me. God accepts me. God is for me. So no matter what comes against me, love is greater than that. Right. So love gives me like a head start over anything. That's trying to pull me down or take me away. When sickness comes, when fear comes, doubt comes, unbelief, perfect love will cast that out. That's right. The more I know I'm loved and accepted, the more I know that I don't accept that. Right. Because I'm accepted in love, I do not accept fear. Right. See and, that? And actually, you know, the one thing that I I don't accept sickness because I'm accepted in love. And love says that I am not to accept that because that is not part of my inheritance yes yes right yes and one thing i just want to share if you are struggling in an area because love encapsulates encapsulates peace it encapsulates health it encapsulates all those things that are part of the victory of calvary um are in there and if you go back and you read romans 8 31 through 39 about the love god's everlasting love and if god is for us who can be against us yeah. and you go back through and it says yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us and then it says for i'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor yeah. things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love or the healing love or the abundant love, whatever the need is, or the peace that's built into love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, your confidence will rise up that I am the heel of the Lord, that I am the, the that I have peace in me, that all those things, because they're all built into love, because they're all part of his very nature right. and the very person of Jesus Christ. Exactly. So I just want to encourage everyone, if you're struggling with an area, go back into those scriptures and study them and where it says love put in what you're fighting against and you'll be able to see that nothing can separate you from what god's already promised you right. because of his love and when you remind god you go god i know you love me yes and when i know and because i know you love me i have confidence that what you promised me is going to happen yeah i trust you god because i know you love me and see god proved his love by giving us promises and giving yeah. us i don't only really love you i promise you that i'll never stop loving you yeah. i promise you that whenever you pray i will hear you because i love you i promise you whenever you speak my name i will back it because i love you yeah see love that's what makes faith work right when i know god loves me i have faith i have confidence if God loves me, he doesn't want me not to have what he's asking me to do. Right. That's what makes sense, right? So when you abide in God's love and you learn about God's love, it, it, it makes your faith become stronger. Yeah. The more I know God loves me, the stronger I have faith to believe anything he asks me to do, I, that it's going to happen. Amen. It's just it's just a part of, the, of what I call 
the principle of love. Uh, you write this down too. I, I put down that God's love creates in us an ability to have confidence in his presence that we yeah. know. We know that when we're praying or praising, that not only does he hear us, we know he hears us and that he's with us. Yeah. Amen. And he draws close. Draw near to me and I will draw near to you. That's right. Not that he's not already in us, but he just loves it. His That's manifest right. presence comes. It's the manifest presence that I'm talking about. Amen. Not the not the indwelling. So so that's the kind of love that's going to conquer fear. The more trust you have in his love, the more confidence you have in his love, fear can't remain in you. Right. Part of fear is based on insecurity. <laughs> yep. If I'm not secure in God's love, then I'm afraid of what I am and who I am. Yep. When I'm secure in God's love, I'm not afraid of me. I accept me. Yeah. Because I'm loved by God. And then you get to a point where you don't want to be anyone else. Amen. I mean, even with all your weaknesses or your whatever faults or yeah. whatever, you don't want to be anyone else. You're very thankful that God made you who you are. Mm -hmm. And when you, that's right. And when you're full of love, you don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Because see, perfect love casts out worry and fear. Right. Fear and worry are twins. They go together. Yeah. I'm familiar with them. Me too. <laughs> I've they, met them a few they live together. Does anybody else <laughs> realize that? Worry and fear hang out together. And, uh, they, so fear and worry are like twins. But perfect love casts out both of them. Amen. And when you know you're loved by God, and we're going to get a lot more in this next few weeks, it will give you such a confidence and security that fear and worry cannot remain in your life. Yeah. They'll try, but they won't bring you. One last thing before we finish today, uh, for this time, I guess. Uh, let's look at verse Ephesians 4.15. So two more verses that we've done today. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. So when we are growing in love, learning his truth, we're growing up in all things to be like Jesus Christ. And that's our goal. And, what, I, and I love goal? how it says, it, it doesn't say Jesus, it says Christ, which right. is the anointed one, yeah. because there's an anointing on love. That's right. Mm -hmm. And and that's exactly right. Because you're smeared, the anointing, you're smeared in the oil of his love. That's right. Amen. And whenever his love saturates you, or as Sarah said, smears you, that's actually what it means in the Bible. Yeah. It starts to cause everything about you to change. Your thinking, your speaking, your words, your actions, your deeds, everything becomes saturated with that anointing of love. Yeah. And we're going to get really into that in the next couple of weeks. One more verse today that we're going to finish with. And Sarah's going to speak this one right here <laughs> oh and we know that all things work together for good to those who love god to those who are called according to his purpose what a great verse and we're going to get really into romans 8 romans 8 and romans 12 are two of the most powerful chapters in the bible amen that i love uh, and we're going to spend some time in both of them in the next couple of weeks but in Romans 8, 28, it says there, all things work together for good. But here's what people miss. It works together for good for those who love God. Right. And and express that love right. to God. And let God know how much they love him. Then things work together for your good. Yeah. So if I love God, with all of my heart, all of my mind, that we started out with in the very, very beginning in Mark 12, 9, 29. If, if we love God with all of our heart and our mind and our thoughts and our actions through praise, through worship, through thanks, through loving others, by making a choice every day 
that I'm going to love God, get in his word. And whenever I meet people today, I'm going to express that love. Amen. When you do that, all things will start working together for your good. Yeah. Make a choice today that I'm going to start to walk in love. Love God. Go back and hear all these definitions again today. And for the rest of this month, we're going to define this and his perfect love will cast out fear. And this will be a process. We're going to give more definitions of love all through the month of March. And as we do, things will drop off. Yes. The more I learn of love and grow in love, the more things in my soul will drop off. Yeah. That's what I'm believing. And the greater ease, things may be challenging in, rela in relationships, but you'll have a greater ease in approaching those challenges. Right. Amen. Because of the love. So let's thank God today for his word. Did you all get a lot out of this today? Yes. Thank you, Did God. You excited about it? Thank you, Lord. It's good. We love you, Lord. Thank good, you, Jesus. Good group on here today. So, Lord, we thank you for your love for us. We just take authority over any spirit of fear. Yes, Lord. And drive it out. And we thank you today for people being touched by your love. Lord Jesus, baptize us in your love today. Thank you, Lord. Let your love, let your fire consume us. And today, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That everybody that's tuned in today, tonight or this week, will be baptized in your love. Thank you, Lord. And never let us think we arrive. Thank you. Let us always be hungry to learn and grow in your love. And thank you, Lord, that today I call forth and Sarah calls forth everyone at the sound of our voice that they are loved by you. Yes, Lord. Accepted by you. Thank you, Lord. That their old past ways are done. Thank you, God. That this is a new day today. Thank you, Lord. Behold, I do a new thing. Yes. Will you not be aware of it? Today, I'm baptizing you in my love. You will walk in newness, new power, and new strength. For this is my desire. And you will be my witnesses. Yes. Here and wherever you go. Be prepared. I'm about to do and show you great and mighty things. Yes. Which you do not know. For I am with you, I go before you, and my hand is upon you. Thank you. Get ready. For I am about to do an amazing thing in your life and the lives of many that I'm sending you to. Says the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I actually just got a word of knowledge that the Lord is healing marriages right now. So, um... If anyone needs, uh, you don't have to raise your hands, but if you want to raise your hands, raise your hands, healing in marriages. So Father, I just thank you, Lord. We lift up all of the marriages and marital relations. And Lord, where there's been breakdown, I thank you, God, that you are the builder. And I thank you, Lord, that you're the architect, you're the designer, you're the builder, and you're the foundation. And I thank you, God, for fresh love coming upon every person in any kind of marital relationship, Lord, that where the enemies tried to come in one way that he has to flee seven right now in the name of Jesus. I take authority over all strife. I take authority over all discord. I take authority over um, all accusation and all offense. And I release the fire of love, the fire of first love first onto you, O oh Lord. And then on to one another. Lord, I just thank you, God, that where there's been breakdown, that, that you are doing a new thing. The fresh wine of the Holy Spirit is going to um, intoxicate spouses to one another. Just like in the book of Song of Solomon, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, for fresh, that fresh intimacy in marriages right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, for um, understanding hearts wisdom 
patience, rejoicing, <laughs> celebrating one another, and looking for the good. Amen. And not taking into account the wrong suffered. I thank you, Lord, that today we choose, all of us choose, and actually this is for everyone, to lay down wrong suffered. Yeah. Things that were actually wrong, we choose, Lord, any of us, married or not, to lay down wrong suffered at your feet. And with that, I just release freedom in Jesus' name, freedom to go forth, freedom to walk in the fire of the Holy Ghost, freedom to walk in the love of God, freedom, freedom, Amen. freedom from the past, freedom to go forward. Look up for your redemption draws near. Look up and behold, for I am coming quickly. Look up. I hear the Lord saying, you don't have time for that. So I thank you, Lord, that we walk in wisdom, redeeming the time. Teach us to number our days. Teach us to have wisdom out of a heart of love. And I thank you, God, that you are the redeemer and the restorer of all things. And we give you thanks in advance for what you are doing. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for that. So thank, thank God. Thank you, Lord. And also for everybody today, I just want to say to you, as we go over this whole series in love the next few weeks, we're going to talk about how you can love things and like things. And there's all kinds of different ways that we can love. And God is going to just, I believe, bring an amazing, uh, fresh, fresh anointing. Yes. Of his love upon all of us. And we're going to fall in love with the Lord more with yes. each other, uh, with people God's sending us to. It's going to be an amazing thing. Thank and uh, that's our prayer. Yes. It's going to be tangible. And we just thank you for coming on today. It's a great day. And we love you. Yes. We love each one of you. And we thank you for your kindness, your faithfulness your support, uh, your prayers. Uh, thank God we're all in this together. And I, I love fellowship. I love this. And I know, you know, the day will come, we're going to meet live. And But even when we do that, we just thank God for everybody that comes online and here and around the United States or wherever, because God just wants all of us to know wherever we are, whoever we are, that we're loved. Yes, yes. We're valued. Yes. Whether we meet live or online, the essence and the backing of all of it is love. Yes. We do this because we love God and we love you. Yes. That's why we do it every week. Yeah. And every day. Yeah. So, amen. Amen. And I just want to share something um, before I guess we go into the giving. Yeah. I just want to ask you all to pray. Um, Nick and Kiana are getting married this Friday. And I would like us to celebrate them as love says that we're to celebrate and for everyone to be in prayer on Friday night for Nick and Kiana and for their future going forward. They're going on a honeymoon next week. And so we just want to celebrate them. And Lord, we just give you thanks, praise, glory, and honor that yeah. you have put Nick and Kiana together. And we speak blessing upon them. We speak your protection over them. We speak your love over them. And we speak your anointing over them, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that in this week leading up to it, Lord, we speak your protection over them and over what you have put together, God. We thank you, God, that we can celebrate just as it is in the marriage, in the in, in heaven, that there's a wedding feast, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, that we celebrate together what you are doing with Nick and Kiana. And we just say thank you for the privilege to celebrate with them. In Jesus' name, we speak Amen. blessing over them. Amen. Amen. Bless to you, Nick and Kiana. Well, let's put it this way. Blessings to both of you. <laughs> and we thank God for both of you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, before we go, we want to share about our giving. Yeah. And uh, 
every week we let you know what we give into. And also we thank you for your giving. So if you want to give, and we believe that you do, just go over to our website and uh, you can give there where it says <clears throat> give at the top. And then you just put your mouse on that and then you can go online and give. And we want to thank you for your faithfulness, yes, thank for you. your love, for your support, for your tithe, your offering. Uh, every week we are so thankful uh, when we see what the Lord has done. What the Lord has done. And we give him all the praise and all the glory. Thank for you, it. Lord. And so if you never have given and you want to give, uh, I would encourage you to show your love for God by giving. Yes. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. Yes. So if you're learning how to give, that's great. But whatever you do, never forget the love God showed you by giving back. He Amen. first loved us so we can love him back. One of the ways we love him back is through words, praise, but also through giving. Yes. So, uh, Sarah, what did we give to last week? Um, so last week we sewed into uh, Jesus' image because yeah. we are standing and believing for a mighty worship team. So we are going to sew where there's awesome worship. And um, we are believing for that. And we want to celebrate what um, is going on. They're down there. in Orlando. Yeah, they're down there. And um, we want to celebrate that. And um, just we're all one we're all one body so yeah. we just want to celebrate and come into agreement there was a, a move of the spirit like a week ago or something so um we just want to celebrate that and um the scripture that the lord just put on my heart was matthew 6 21 for where your treasure is your heart there your heart will be also so when you sometimes even if you don't feel it out of the love of god you sow this, you sow the seed, and then it actually increases your love yeah. for the Lord. It's and so I just want to share that with you that the Lord looks on that because he looks at the heart. Yeah. He so Father, we, we thank you for that and we thank you for your word. And today, as people give, we bless them. Yes, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for every person. Yes, Lord. That tuned in today or tonight or this week. We bless them and we thank you for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love for them and your love for us and our love for them. Yes. Lord. We just praise you and thank you for all that you did today. Thank you, Lord. And thank you for the giving in advance. And thank you for all the word that went forth and that that seed will be watered in every heart and will not return void. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. All right, everyone. It was great seeing you today. We love each one of you. Yes, we do. Have a great rest of the week, wherever you are. Lord willing, we'll see you here next Sunday. You will. We will. But We you, call those things in. Pray for us. We May the Lord it. bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. I speak Psalm 91, protection over you yes, all week. Yes, yes. And thank you in advance, Lord, for the good things that you're going to bring about in your people Thank as you, we Lord. walk in love from today forward in a fresh way in Jesus name. And everybody said, Hey, amen. We love you guys. We bless you. We love you. Yep, we do. And we will see you next week. See you next week. Love you guys. Invite a friend. Yep. Invite friends. Love you.